brothers and sisters in the Lord, today I'm going to read the book of Jazer. The book of Jazer is mentioned in the Old Testament. If you ever read the story of Joshua, when he prayed that the sun would stand still, it mentions the book of Jazer, that that was also recorded in the book of Jazer. And throughout the Old Testament, the Old Testament mentions the book of Jazer. It did not make it into the Old Testament canyon, but it's like the little Genesis. It tells the same stories that are in the book of Genesis, only with a little more detail. So I'm going to read the book of Jazer today to you. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And God created man in his own image. And God formed man from the ground, and he blew into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living soul, endowed with speech. And the Lord said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a help me. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took away one of his ribs, and he built flesh upon it, and formed it, and brought it to Adam. And Adam awoke from his sleep, and behold, a woman was standing before him. And he said, This is bone of my bone, and it shall be called woman, for this has been taken from man. And Adam called her name Eve. For she was the mother all living. And God blessed them and called their names Adam and Eve in the day that he created them. And the Lord God said, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And the Lord God took Adam and his wife, and he placed them in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And he commanded them and said unto them, From every tree of the garden you may eat, but from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. And when God had blessed and commanded them, he went from them, and Adam and his wife dwelt in the garden according to the command which the Lord had commanded them. And the serpent which God had created with them in the earth came to them to incite them to transgress the command of God which he had commanded them. And the serpent enticed and persuaded the woman to eat from the tree of knowledge, and the woman hearkened to the voice of the serpent, and she transgressed the word of God, and took from the tree the knowledge of good and evil, and she ate, and she took from it, and gave it also to her husband, and he ate. And Adam and his wife transgressed the command of God, which he commanded them, and God knew it, and his anger was kindled against them, and he cursed them. And the Lord God drove them that day from the garden of Eden to till the ground from which they were taken. And they went and dwelt at, at the east of the garden of Eden. And Adam knew his wife Eve, and she bore two sons and three daughters. And she called the name of the firstborn Cain, saying, I have obtained a man from the Lord. And the name of the other she called Abel, for she said, In vanity we came into the earth. And in vanity we shall be taken from it. And the boys grew up, and their father. Wait a minute. I lost my place. Just give me a second. And the boys grew up, and their father gave them a possession in the land. And Cain was a tiller of the ground, and Abel a keeper of sheep. And it was. At the expiration of a few years that they brought an approximately offering to the Lord. And Cain brought from the fruit of the ground, and Abel brought from the firstlings of his flock, from the fat thereof. And God turned and inclined to Abel and his offering, and a fire came down from the Lord from heaven and consumed it. And unto Cain in his offering the Lord God, God did not turn. And he did not incline to it, for he had brought from the, the fruit of the ground before the Lord. And Cain was jealous against his brother Abel on account of this, and he sought a pretext to slay him. And sometime after, Cain and Abel, his brother, went one day into the field to do their work, and they were both in the field, Cain tilling and plowing his ground, and Abel feeding his flock. And the flock passed that part which Cain had plowed, in the ground, and he thoroughly grieved Cain on this account. And Cain approached his brother Abel in anger, and he said unto him, 
What is there between me and thee that thou comest to drow and bring thy flock to feed in my land? And Abel answered his brother Cain and said unto him, What is there between me and thee that thou should eat the flesh of my flock and clothe thyself with their wool? And and now therefore put off the the wool of my sheep with which thou hast clothed thyself, and recompense me for their fruit and flesh which thou hast eaten. And when thou shalt have done this, I will then go from the land as thou hast said. And Cain said to his brother, Abel, surely if I slay thee this day, you will require thy blood from me. And Abel answered Cain, saying, Surely God who has made us in the earth, he will avenge my cause, and he will require my blood from me, just that I slay me. For the Lord is the judge and arbiter, and is he who will requit man according to his evil, and the wicked man according to the wickedness that he may do upon earth. And now if thy shall slay me here, surely God knoweth thy secret views, and will judge thee for the evil which thou didst clothe do unto me this day. And when Cain heard the words which Abel his brother had spoken, behold, the anger of Cain was kindled against his brother, Abel, for declaring this thing. And Cain hastened and rose up and took the iron part of his plowing instrument, with which he suddenly smote his brother and slew him. And Cain spilt the blood of his brother Abel upon the earth, and the blood of Abel streamed upon the earth before the flock. And after this Cain repented at having slain his brother, and he was sadly grieved, and he wept over him, and he vexed him exceedingly. And Cain rose up and dug a hole in the field, wherein he put his brother's body, and he turned the dust over it. And the Lord knew what Cain had done to his brother, and the Lord appeared to Cain and said unto him, Where is Abel thy brother that was with thee? And Cain dissembled and said, I do not know, am I my brother's keeper? And the Lord said unto him, What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground, where thou hast slain him. For thou hast slain thy brother, and hast dissembled before me, and dis image in thy heart that I saw thee not, nor knew all thy actions. But thou didst this thing, and didst slain thy brother for naught, and because he spoke rightly to thee. And now therefore cursed be thy from the ground, which opened his mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand, and wherein thou didst bury him. And it shall be, when thou shalt kill it, it shall no more give thee its strength as the beginning. For the thorns and thistles shall be growing, grow produce, and thou shalt be moving and wandering in the earth, until the day of thy death. And at that time Cain went out from the presence of the Lord, from the place where he was, and he went moving and wandering in the land towards the east of Eden, he and all his belongings to him. And Cain knew his wife in those days, and she conceived and bore a son. And he called his name Enoch, saying, In that time the Lord began to give him rest and quiet the earth. And at that time, Cain also began to build a city, and he built this city. He called the name of the city Enoch, according to the name of his son. For in those days, the Lord had given him rest upon the earth, and he did not move about and wander as in the beginning. And Irad was born to Enoch, and Irad began Mushri, and Mushri begot Melusalah. And it was in the hundred and thirtieth year of the life of Adam upon the earth that he again knew Eve, his wife. And she conceived and bore a son in his likeness, and in his likeness she, and she called his name Seth, saying, Because God has anointed or appointed me another seed in the place of Abel, for Cain has slain him. And Seth lived one hundred and five years, and he begot a son. And Seth called the name of his son Enish, saying, Because in that time the sons of men began to multiply and to afflict their souls and hearts by transgressing and rebelling against God. And it was in the days of Enish that the sons of men continued to rebel and transgress against God, to increase the anger of the Lord against the sons of men. 
And the sons of men went and they served other gods, and they forgot the Lord who had created them in the earth. In those days, the sons of men made images of brass and iron, wood and stone, and they bowed down and served them. And every man made his God, and they bowed down to them. And the sons of men forsake the Lord all the days of Enosh and his children. And the anger of the Lord was kindled on account of their works and the abominations which they did in the earth. And the Lord caused the waters of the river Gihon to overwhelm them, and he destroyed and consumed them. And he destroyed the third part of the earth. And notwithstanding this, the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and their hands were yet extended to do evil in the sight of the Lord. And in those days there was neither sowing nor reaping in the earth, and there was no food for the sons of men, and the famine was very great in those days. And the seed which they sowed in those days in the ground became thorns, thistles, and briars, for from the days of Adam was the de de declaration concerning the earth of the curse of God, which he cursed the earth on account of the sin which Adam sinned before the Lord. And it was when men continued to rebel and transgress against God and to corrupt their ways that the earth was also became corrupt. And Enosh lived ninety years and begot Kenyon. And Kenyon grew up, and he was forty years old, and he became wise and had knowledge and skill and all wisdom. And he reigned over all the sons of men, and he led the sons of men to wisdom and knowledge. For Canaan was a very wise man and had understanding and all wisdom, and with his wisdom he ruled over spirits and demons. And Canaan knew by his wisdom that God would destroy the sons of men for having sinned upon earth, and that the Lord would in the latter days bring upon them the waters of the flood. And in those days Canaan wrote upon tablets of stone what was to take place in time to come. And he put them in his treasure, treasures. And Canaan reigned over the whole earth, and he turned some of the sons of men to the service of God. And when Canaan was seventy years old, he begot. Give me a moment. I accidentally scrolled too far up. Let's see. And when Canaan was seventy years old, he begot three sons and two daughters. And these are the names of the children of Canaan. The name of the firstborn was Mahalali, the second Enan, and the third Merd, and their sisters were Ada, Zilla. These are the five children of Canaan that were born to him. And Lemish, the son of Melusa, became related to Canaan by marriage, and he took his two daughters for his wives. And Ada conceived and bore a son to Lemish, and she called his name Jabal. And she again conceived and bore a son and called his name Jabal and Zeba, her sister, was barren in those days and had no offspring. And for in those days the sons of men began to transgress against God and to transgress the commandments which he had commanded to Adam to be fruitful and multiply in the earth. And some of the sons of men caused their wives to drink a drop that would render them barren, in order that they might retain their figures, and whereby their beautiful appearance might not fade. And when the sons of men caused some of these wives to drink, Zala drank with them. And the child-bearing women appear, appeared abominable in the sight of their husbands as widows, whilst their husbands lived, for to the barren ones only they were attached. And in the end of days and years, when Zala became old, the Lord opened her womb. And she conceived and bore a son, and she called his name Tubal Cain, saying, After I have withered away, have I obtained from the Almighty God. When she conceived again and bore a daughter, and she called her name Nama, for she said, After I have withered away, have I obtained pleasure and delight. And Lemish was old and advanced in years, and his eyes were dim, that he could not see, and Tubal Cain, his son, 
was leading him, and it was one day that Lemish went into the field, and Tubal Cain, his son, was with him. And once they were walking the field, Cain, the son of Adam, advanced towards him, for Lemish was very old and could not see much, and Tubal Cain, his son, was very young. And let's see. And Tubal Cain told his father to draw his bow, and with the arrows he smote Cain, who was yet far off, and he slew him, for he appeared to them to be an animal. And the arrows entered Cain's body, although he was distant from them, and he fell to the ground and died. And the Lord requited Cain's evil according to his wickedness, which he had done to his brother Abel, according to the word of the Lord which he had spoken. And it came to pass when Cain had died, that Lemish and Tubal went to see the animal which they had slain, and they saw, and behold, Cain, their grandfather, was fallen dead upon the earth. And Lemish was very much grieved at having done this, and clapping his hands together, he struck his son and caused his death. And the wives of Lemish heard what Lemish had done, and they sought to kill him. And the wives of Lemish hated him from that day, because he slew Cain and Tubal Cain. And the wise of Lemish separated from him. They would not hearken to him in those days. <clears throat> and Lemish came to his wives, and he pressed them to listen to him about it this manner. And he said to his wife, Ada and Z Zilla, Hear, O my voice, O wise of Lemish, attend to my words, for now you have imagined it said that I slew a man with my wounds, and a child with my stripes, for that there have been done no violence. But surely know that I am old and gray headed, and that my eyes are heavy through age, and I did this thing unknowingly. And the wise of Lemish listened to him in this matter, and they returned to him with the vice of their father Adam, but they bore no children to him from that time, knowing that God's anger was increasing in those days against the sons of men, to destroy them with the waters of a flood for their evil doings. And Mahalali, the son of Canaan, lived sixty-five years, and begot Jared, and Jared lived sixty-two years, and begot Enoch. And Enoch lived sixty-five years, and begot Melusalah. And Enoch walked with God after having begot Melusalah, and he served the Lord and despised the evil ways of men. And the soul of Enoch was wrapped up in the instruction of the Lord, to knowledge and an understanding. And he wisely retired from the sons of men and secret himself from them for many days. <clears throat> and it was at the expiration of many years, once he was serving the Lord and praying before him in the house, that an angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Here am I. And he said, Rise up. And go forth from thy house and from the place where thou didst hide thyself. And appear to the sons of men in order that thou mayst teach them the way in which they should go. And the work which they must accomplish to enter in the ways of God. And Enoch rose up according to the word of the Lord. And went forth from his house, from his place, and from the chamber in which he was concealed. And he went to the sons of men and taught them. The ways of the Lord, and at that time assembled the sons of men and acquainted them with the instructions of the Lord, and he ordered it to be proclaimed in all the places where the sons of men dwell, saying, Where is the man who wishes to know the way of the Lord and good works? Let him come to Enoch. And all the sons of men then assembled to him, for all who desired this thing went to Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men according to his word of the Lord, and they came and bowed to him, and they heard the word. And the Spirit of God was upon Enoch, and he taught all his men the wisdom of God and his ways. And the sons of men served the Lord all the days of Enoch, and they came to hear his wisdom. Okay. 
And he ordered to proclaim all in all places for the sons of men to all say, Where is the man who wishes to know the ways of the Lord and good works? Let him come to eat and all. And the Spirit of God was upon Enoch, and all the kings of the sons of men, both first and last, together with their princes and judges, came to Enoch when they heard of his wisdom. And they bowed down to him, and they also required of Enoch to reign over them, to which he consented. And they assembled in all 130 kings and princes, and they made Enoch king over them, and they were all under his power and command. And Enoch taught them wisdom and knowledge, and the ways of the Lord, and he made peace amongst them, and peace was throughout the earth during the life of Enoch. And Enoch reigned over the sons of men 243 years, and he did justice and righteousness with all his people, and he led them in the ways of the Lord. And these are the generations of Enoch, Melusalah, Elijah, and Emelish, three sons of their sisters, both Micah and Nahum. And Melusa lived 87 years, and he begot Lemish. And it was in the 56th year of the life of Lemish, when Adam died, 930 years old, was he at his death. And his two sons, with Enoch and Melusa, his son, buried him with great hope as the burial kings in the cave which God had told them. And in that place, all the sons of men made a great mourning and weeping on account of Adam. It has therefore became a custom among the sons of men to this day. And Adam died because he ate the tree of knowledge, he and his children after him, as the Lord God has spoken. And it was in the year of Adam's death, which was the 243rd year of the reign of Enoch. In that time, Enoch resolved to separate himself from the sons of men and to secret himself as, as a first in order to serve the Lord. And Enoch did so, but did not ent entirely secret himself from them, but kept away from the sons of men three days, and then went to them for one day. And during the three days that he was in his chamber, he prayed to and praised the Lord his God, and the day in which he went and appeared to his subjects, he taught them the way of the Lord, and all they asked him about the Lord told them. And he did in this manner for many years, and he afterwards concealed himself for six days, and appeared to his people one day in seven, and after that once in a month, and then once in a year, until all the kings, princes, and sons and men sought for him, and desired again to see the face of Enoch, and to hear his word, but they could not, as all the sons and men were greatly afraid of Enoch, and they feared to approach him on account of the godlike awe that was seated upon his countenance. Therefore no man could look at him, fearing he might punish and die. And all the kings and princes resolved to assemble the sons of men, and to come to eat milk, thinking that they might all speak to him at the, at the time, where, when he should come forth amongst them. And they did so. And the day came when Enoch went forth, and they all assembled and came to him. And Enoch spoke to them the words of the Lord, and he taught them wisdom and knowledge. And they bowed down before him, and they said, May the king live, may the king live. And some time after, when the kings and princes and the sons of men were speaking to Enoch, and Enoch was teaching them the ways of God, behold, an angel of the Lord then called unto Enoch from heaven, and wished to bring him up to heaven and to make him reign there over the sons of God, as he reigned over the sons of men upon earth. When at that time Enoch heard that this, he went and assembled all the inhabitants of the earth, and taught them wisdom and knowledge, and gave them divine instructions. And he said to them, I have been required to ascend into heaven. I therefore do not know the day of my going. And now therefore I will teach you wisdom and knowledge, and will give you instructions before I leave you, how to act upon earth whereby you may live. And he did so. And he taught them wisdom and knowledge, and gave them instructions. And he reproved them, and he replaced before them statutes and judgments to do upon earth. And he made peace amongst them, and he taught them everlasting life, and dwelt with them some time, teaching them all these things. At that time the sons of men were with Enoch. 
And Enoch was speaking to them, and they lifted up their eyes, and the likeness of a great horse descended from heaven, and the horse passed paced in the air. And they told Enoch they had seen, and Enoch said to them, On my account does this horse descend upon earth. The time is come when I must go from you, and I shall no more be seen by him. By, by him. And the hearse descended at that time and stood before Enoch, and all the sons of men that were with Enoch saw him. And Enoch then again ordered a voice to be proclaimed, saying, Where is the man who delighted to know the way of the Lord his God? Let him come this day to Enoch before he is taken from us. And all the sons of men assembled and came to Enoch that day, and all the kings of the earth was the, with their princes and counselors remained with him that day. And Enoch then taught the sons of men wisdom and knowledge, and gave them divine instructions. And he bade them serve the Lord and walk in his ways all the days of their lives. And he continued to make peace among them. And it was after this that he rose up and rode upon their horns, and he went forth, and all the sons of men went after him. About 800,000 men they went with him one day's journey. And the second day he said to them, Return home to your tents. Why will you go? Perhaps you may die. And some of them went from him, and those that remained went with him six days' journey. And Enos said to them every day, Return to your tent, lest you may die. But they were not willing to return. And they went with him. And on the sixth day some of the men remained and clinged to him. And they said to him, We will go with thee. To the place where thy goest, as the Lord liveth, death only shall separate us. And they urged so much to go with him that he ceased speaking to them, and they went after him and would not return. And when the kings returned, they caused the census to be taken in order to know the number of remaining men that went with Enoch. And it was upon the seventh day that Enoch ascended into heaven in a whirlwind with horses and chariots of fire. And on the eighth day, all the kings that had been with Enoch sent to bring back the number of men that were with Enoch in that place from which he sent it into heaven. And all those kings went to the place, and they found the earth there filled with snow, and upon the snow were large stones of snow. And one said to the other, Come, let us break through the snow, and see perhaps the men that remain with Enoch are dead, and are now under the stones of snow. And they, was, and they searched, but could not find him, for he is ascended into heaven. And all the days that Enoch lived upon earth were 365 years. And when Enoch had ascended into heaven, all the kings of earth rose and took Melusalah, his son, and anointed him, and they caused him to reign over them in the place of his father. And Melusah acted uprightly in the sight of God as his father. Enoch had taught him. He, he likewise, during the whole of his life, taught the sons of men wisdom, knowledge, and the fear of God. And he did not turn from the good way, either to the right or to the left. But in the later days of Melusala, the sons of men turned from the Lord. They corrupted the earth. They robbed and plundered each other, and they rebelled against God, and they transgressed, and they corrupted their ways, and would not hearken to the voice of Melusala, but rebelled against him. And the Lord was exceedingly wroth against them. And Lord continued to destroy the seed in those days, so that there were, was neither sowing nor weeping in the earth. For when they sowed the ground in order that they might obtain food for their support, behold, thorns and thistles were produced, which they did not sow. And still the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and their hands were still extended to do evil in the sight of God. And they provoked the Lord 
with neither. And they provoked the Lord with their evil ways, and the Lord was very wroth, and repented that he had made man. And he thought to destroy and annihilate them, and he did so. In those days when Lemish the son of Melusa was a hundred and sixty years old, Seth the son of Adam died. And all the days that Saph lived were 912 years, and he died. And Lamesh was 180 years old when he took Ashamul, the daughter of Elijah, Elijah, and the son of Enoch, his uncle, and she conceived. At that time, the sons of men sowed the ground, and a little food was produced. Yet the sons of men did not turn from their evil ways, and they transpassed and rebelled against God. And the wife of Lemesh conceived and bore him a son at that time, at the revolution of the year. And Melusin Law called his name Noah, saying the earth was in his days at rest and free from corruption. And Lemesh, his father, called his name Min Echim, saying, This one shall come for us in our works and misery tore in the earth which God had cursed. And the child grew up and was weaned, and he went in the ways of his father Melusala, perf perf perfect and upright with God. And all the sons of men departed from the ways of the Lord in those days, as they multiplied upon the face of the earth with sons and daughters, and they taught one another their evil practices, and they continued sinning against the Lord. And every man made unto himself a god, and they robbed and plundered every man his neighbor, as well as his relative. And they corrupted the earth, and the earth was filled with violence. And their judges and rulers went to the daughters of men, and took their wives by force from their husbands, according to their choices. And the sons of men in those days took from the cattle of the earth the beasts of the field and the fowls of the air, and topped the mixture of animals of one species with the other, in order therewith to pervert the Lord. And God saw the whole earth, and it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his ways upon earth, all men and all animals. And the Lord said, I will plot out man that I created from the face of the earth, yea, from man to the birds of the air, together with cattle and beasts that are in the fields of the for I repent that I made them. And all men who walked in the ways of the Lord died in those days before the Lord brought the evil upon men, which he had declared. For this was from the Lord, that they should not see the evil which the Lord spoke of concerning the sons of men. And Noah found grace in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord cho chose him and his children to rise up seed from them upon the face of the whole earth. And it was in the eighth Eighty-fourth year of the life of Noah, that Enoch, the son of Seth, died, and he was 950 years old at his death. In the 179th year of the life of Noah, Cana, the son of Enosh, died, and all the days of Cana was 910 years, and he died. And in the 234th year of the life of Noah, Muhalali, the son of Cana, died, and the days of Mahalali were 895 years, and he died. And, and Jared, the son of Mahalali, died in those days, in the 336th year of the life of Noah. And all the days of Jared were 962 years, and he died. And all who followed the Lord died in those days, before they saw the evil which God declared to do them from the earth. And after the lapse of many years, in the 480th year of the life of Noah, when all those men who followed the Lord had died away from amongst the sons of men, and only Melusalot was then left, God said unto Noah and Melusalot, saying, Speak ye, and proclaim that to the sons of men, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Return from your evil ways, and forsake your works, and the Lord will repent of the evil that he declared to do to you, so that it shall not come to pass. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I give you a period of one hundred and twenty years, 
if you will turn to me and forsake your evil ways, and I will also turn away from the evil which I told you, and it shall not exist, saith the Lord. And Noah and Melusimus spoke all the words of the Lord to the sons of men day after day, constantly speaking to them. But the sons of men would not hearken to them, nor incline their ears to their words, and they were stiff-necked. And the Lord granted them a period of 120 years, saying, If they were returned, then, he, then God will repent of the evil, so as not to destroy the earth. Noah the son of Lemish refrained from taking a wife in those days to begot children, for he said, Surely now God will destroy the earth. Who for then shall I begot children? And Noah was a just man. He was perfect in his generation, and the Lord chose him to rise up seed from his seed upon the face of the earth. And the Lord said to Noah, Take unto thee a wife, and begot children, for I have seen the righteous before me in this generation. And I shall rise up seed, and thy children with thee in the midst of the earth. And Noah went and took a wife, and he chose Nama, the daughter of Enoch, and she was 580 years old. And Noah was 490 years old when he took Nama for a wife. And Nama conceived and bore a son, and he called his name Jepheth saying, God has enlarged me in the earth. And she conceived again and bore a son, and he called his name Shem, saying, God has made me a remnant to rise up seed in the midst of the earth. And Noah was 502 years old when name of their Shem. And the boys grew up and went in the ways of the Lord, and all that Melusa and Noah their father taught them. And... And Lemish, the father of Noah, died in those days, yet verily he did not go with all his heart to, in the way of his father. He died in the 195th year of the life of Noah. And all the days of Lemish were 770 years he died. And all the sons of men who knew the Lord died in that year before the Lord brought evil upon them. For the Lord willed them to die so not so as not to behold the evil that God would bring upon their brothers and relatives as, as he had declared to do. In that time the Lord said to Noah, Melusalah, stand forth and proclaim to the sons of men all the words that I spoke to you in those days, preventure that they may turn from their evil ways, and I will then repent of the evil and will not bring it. And Noah and Melusa stood forth and said in the, in the ears of the sons of men all that God had spoke concerning them. But the sons of men would not hearken, neither would they incline their ears to all their decorations. But the sons of men would, would not hearken, neither would they incline their ears to all their declarations. And it was after this that the Lord said to know, The end of all flesh is come before me on account of their evil deeds, and behold, I would destroy the earth. And do thy take unto thee, go for a word, and go to a certain place, and make a large ark, and place it in that spot. And thus shall thy make it three hundred cubits its length, fifty cubits board, and thirty cubits high. And thy shall make unto thee a door, open at its side, and to a cubit thy shall finish above, and cover it within and without with pitch. And behold, I will bring the flood of waters upon the earth, and all flesh be destroyed from under the heavens, all that is upon earth shall perish. And thy and thy household shall go and gather two couples of all living things, male and female, and shall bring them to the ark to rise up seed from them upon earth. And gather unto thee all food that is eaten by all the animals, so that there may be food for thee in the them. And thy shall choose for thy sons three maidens from the daughters of men, and they shall be wise to thy sons. And Noah rose up, and he made the ark in the place where God had commanded him, and Noah did as God had ordered him. In his 595th year, Noah commanded to make the ark, and he made the ark in five years, as the Lord had commanded. Then Noah took the three daughters of Elikim, son of Melusa, for wives for his sons, as the Lord had commanded Noah. And it and it was at that time Melusa, the sons of Enoch, died, 160 years old, 
was he at his death. At that time, after the death of Melusia, the Lord said to Noah, Go thy with thy household into the ark. Behold, I would gather to thee all the animals in the earth, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the air, and thy shall all come and surround the ark. And thy shall go and, and seat thyself by the doors of the ark, and all the beasts, the animals, and the fowls shall assemble and place themselves before thee, and such of them shall come and crouch before thee. Shall thy take and deliver into the hands of thy sons, who shall bring them to the ark, and all that will stand before thee thy shall leave. And the Lord brought this about in the next day, and animals, beasts, and fowls came in great multitudes and surround the earth, or the ark. <laughs> And Noah went and seated himself by the door of the ark, and all flesh that crouched before him he brought into the ark, and all that stood before him he left upon earth. And a lioness came with her two kittens, male and female, and the three crouched before Noah, and the two kittens rose up against a lioness and smote her, and made her flee from her place. And she went away, and they returned to their places and crouched upon the earth before Noah. And the lioness ran away and stood in the place of the lions. And Noah saw this and wondered greatly, and he rose and took the two kittens and brought them into the ark. And Noah brought into the ark from all living creatures that were upon earth, so that there was none left but which Noah brought into the ark. Two and two came to Noah into the ark, but from the clean animals and clean fowls he brought seven couples as God had commanded him. And all the animals and beasts and fowls were still there. And they surrounded the ark at every place, and the rain had not descended till seven days after. And on that day the Lord caused the whole earth to shake, and the sun darkened, and the foundations of the world raged, and the whole earth was moved violently, and the lightning flashed, and the thunder ruled and all the fountains on the earth were broken up such as what not, not known to the inhabitants before and god did this mighty act in order to terrify the sons of men that they might be no more evil upon earth and still the sons of men would not return from their evil ways and they increased the anger of the lord at that time and did not even direct their hearts to all this and at the end of seven days, in the six hundred year of the life of Noah, the waters of the flood were upon the earth, and all the fountains of the deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened, and the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And Noah and his household, and all the living creatures that were with him, came into the ark on account of the waters of the flood, and the Lord shut him in. And all, and the sons of men assembled to. Oh, and all the sons of men that were left upon the earth became exhausted through evil and on account of the rain, the waters were coming more violently upon the earth, and animals and beasts were still surrounding the ark. And the sons of men assembled together about 700,000 men and women, and they came unto Noah to the ark. And they called to Noah, saying, Open for us that we may come to thee in the ark, and wherefore shall we not die? And Noah, with a loud voice, answered them from the ark, saying, Have you not rebelled against the Lord, and said that he does not exist? And therefore the Lord brought upon you this evil to destroy and cut you off from the face of the earth. And he said to Noah, We are ready to return to the Lord. Open for us that we may live and not die. But, Noah said, but now you come and tell me on this account of the troubles of your souls. Now also the Lord will not listen to you, neither will he give air to you on this day, so that you will not succeed in your, in your wishes. And the sons of men approached in order to break into the ark to come in on account of the rain, for they could not bear the rain upon them. And the Lord sent all the beasts and animals that stood around the ark, and the beasts overpowered them and drove them from that place. And every man his way, and they again scattered themselves upon the face of the earth. And the rain was still descending upon the earth. 
and it descended forty days and forty nights, and the waters prevailed greatly upon the earth. And all flesh that was upon the earth or in the waters died, whether men, animals, beasts, creeping things, or birds of the air. And there only remained Noah and those that were with him in the ark. So the waters prevailed, and they greatly increased upon the earth. And they lifted up the ark, and it was raised from the earth. And the ark floated upon the face of the waters, and it was tossed upon the waters, so that all the living creatures within were turned about like porridge in a kettle. And great anxiety seized all the living creatures that were in the ark, and the ark was like to be broken. And all the living creatures that were in the ark were, were terrified. And the lions growled, and the oxen lowed, and the wolves howled, and every living creature in the ark spoke and limit in his own language, so that their voices reached to a great distance. And Noah and his son cried and wept in their trouble. They were greatly afraid that they had reached the gates of death. And Noah cried unto the Lord, and cried unto him on account of this, He said, O Lord, help us, for we have no strength to bear this evil that has impressed us. For the waves of the waters have surrounded us, and the ship turns have terrified us. The snares of death have come before us. Answer us, O Lord, answer us. Light up thy countenance towards us, and be gracious to us. Redeem us, and deliver us. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Noah, and the Lord remembered him. And a wind passed over the earth, and the water was stilled, and the ark rested. And the fountains of the deep and the winds of heaven were stopped, and the rain from heaven were restrained, and the waters decreased in those days, and ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. And Noah then opened the windows of the ark, and Noah still called out to the Lord at that time. He said, O Lord, who does form the earth and the heavens and all there, therein, bring forth our souls from this confinement, from the prison where thou hast placed us, for I am much wearied signing and lord hearken to the voice of noah and said to him when thy shall have completed a full year thy shall then go forth and as the revolution of the year where a full year was completed noah's dwelling in the ark the waters were dried from the earth and noah put off the covering of the ark and at that time at that time, on the twenty-seventh day of the second month, the earth was dry, but Noah and his sons and those that were with him did not go out from the ark until the Lord told them. And the day came that the Lord told them to go out, and they all went out from the ark. And they went and returned every one to his way and to his place, and Noah and his sons dwelt in the land that God told them. And they served the Lord all their days, and the Lord blessed Noah and his sons on their going out from the ark. And he said to them, Be fruitful and fill the earth, become strong and increase abundantly in the earth and multiply thereof. Okay, I'm going to stop here for now and take a break. So, and then later on I'll read the rest of Jasmine.